there's a lot of different ways to go about building out design systems, right? Um, a lot of people think it's just about building out the components and building out the right design pieces and making sure everything's connected and functioning and seamless token um, automation all the way through. While that is true, really a lot of the work is about connecting our team and getting that team alignment. And these resources are really focused about getting that team alignment. The next resource that we're gonna talk about is the governance model or contribution model. So this is a super beneficial template when we are thinking about how do we contribute or how do we manage contributions to our design system and how do we even make the decisions about what needs to be added and what doesn't need to be added. Uh, so we use this throughout the entire design system creation, not just at the end. If you save documentation and things like that to the end, it's probably not gonna get done. So it's good to just be thinking about it the whole time. Um, and this is super helpful for educating new team members on building out their individual process and understanding the design system and how they can contribute and how the different rules and maybe guidelines and definitions are uh, set up. So we're going to jump into here. Like I said before, same thing. We've got a little knowledge center, kind of how to unpack this and kind of talking about sort of the way we think about this. And the way we think about uh, the governance model is it's really a framework of four categories. And we broke it up into four um, based on different models that we've looked at and different governance uh, and contribution models we've seen and, and kind of unpacked. And this is a boilerplate, so it's framed up with different questions. So you can go in there and ask yourself some questions as you're going through this and make those adjustments as you're kind of working through. So, but like I said before, we broke it up into these four specific categories. Uh, we have our decision area. So what is the decision tree or the flow that I go through to make an actual decision? So for example, if I zoom in here, it's like, does this component already exist? Yes or no. If it does, does it meet all requirements? No. Then we're going to unpack the needed requirements and present them to the team. Does this component, is it a new component or a modification? If it's new, does this component scale across different products or screens, right? So like, what are some of the things that we can go through as designers as we're asking the design system team or the design system uh, or as we're acting, asking everyone who's contributing to the design system, do we need this component or not? So that's part of the decision area. The next one is the design area. And we've unpacked the design as sort of separate because one of the things that we see in a lot of teams is design is in charge of building out a component and is in charge of thinking about of all the elements first before development gets involved, right? So uh, we broke this out here. Design might be building this in their UI kit. They're mocking it up with all the different states. They're gonna review the component with the development team. And they're going to then see if it is uh, sort of approved by the development team, and then it'll go over to the development side, which is the next category that we think about is the development side of that. And then in here, this is might be where we're creating that branch in Figma and we're building that final component. Here we're conceptually working through what it might look like, what it needs, what are the different states, and then here we're actually building that, that final piece. And development's building their component in the sandbox, things like that, we're testing it. Um, and then we're documenting the component, the properties, usage guidelines, animations, different things that we might want to document. Then we're going to get sign off. And then we go to the last part, which is delivery. And delivery is like publishing it to the design kit, publishing it um, live components out to our sandbox environment or to our live coded library, and then communicating with the team to the, uh, the different links and components and documentation, making sure that the team's aware of that. Right. So this is a really simple breakdown of a governance flow, but it's built so that you can customize it for your team. And what does your team actually need? So, for example, what we've noticed with a lot of our clients and a lot of design system builds is the design team is a lot more involved here with the early stage of a component than they are when it gets into develop development. So honestly, like this actually can get removed from here because what design is going to do is they are going to create a branch in Figma and they are going to build that component, right? Figma has branching. So we notice this with a lot of organizations. So they create a branch with Figma. And what we might put in here is uh, follow branching guidelines. 
Um, and those branching guidelines, oh, let's zoom in. branching guidelines uh, might have a link somewhere. So then we would add that link and we'll just do google.com for now, right? So we're gonna do that there um, and we'll make sure that we have that. And so what our design team is gonna do is they're gonna mock up the component in all the states. They're gonna review the component maybe with the development team, but instead of mocking up the component in all the states in sort of isolation, we're just gonna do this in the branch that we've created. So this is actually gonna get moved over here and we're gonna delete some of these connectors. And this is based on like a specific client that we've worked with and kind of how they function and their uh, design system team works um, after discussion. So we're going to move this connector down here to this. So design team is going to create a branch of Figma. They're going to follow the branching guidelines. Then we're going to mock up all the components and the states. And then in this specific instance, and I'll just duplicate this because for simplicity's sake, um, once the component is done, the design team will review with design system team group. And then we'll move this, are there any changes down here? I'll delete this little line here. Right, and we'll start to ask these questions and unpack this flow. And if there are changes, We'll move it back up here, and then we'll add a yes. And actually, that's not going to go to the branch. It's going to go up here to the mock-up. So we'll move this out here. And then if there aren't any changes, it's going to move on. And so then we'll go through and kind of clean this up. And this is our new, our new our new design process. And this might change, right? So like. The idea of updating this as we go is that this might change because different needs might happen, um, right? When we get into the decision area, there might be parts where we now have to, uh, we have to think about multi-tier design system, right? So then we have to ask more questions and things like that. So this might evolve and you might have different models depending on how big your design system is or how big your design system team is. So like I said, this is a super beneficial diagram to go through and really unpack with your team. And using that design system interview that we talked about earlier, um, you're going to find a bunch of things that you might impart in here based on the questions you're asking. You might know, you might not know things about your process that are currently in place that you can start to map out and put that, um, and put that in here as well. We like to link to all of our documentation too. So that's really nice, well, nice way to link back out to specific documentation. So for example, if we have branching rules written in a Notion document or in the um, design area, we might have an accessibility check. So we might go, hey, link to all of our accessibility uh, question or documentation, or we might have uh, token documentation hosted in something like zero height, things like that. We might have those links in here as well as we go through, because this is a good resource for someone to understand the full process and really understand where all the documentation is for that process. And this is part of our design systems in Figma course. So you don't need to have used the course to use these resources. They're all free in the community. But if you really want to unpack how we build out design systems in Figma from like a designer's point of view, the whole design team here at Headway put a really great course together. It's available at shipwright.design. So definitely feel free to check that out. We've got some other resources out there as well, like UX audit templates, building customer journey maps, a brand guideline template. And then of course, our free UI kit and design system starter kit. And we use these in everything that we do. And if you do use any of these or download them, we're definitely looking forward to any feedback that you might have of adjustments or things that, that work best for you or didn't work for you as we're trying to build really the best resources that we can for design systems and for designers working through their, their different product designs.